Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 87. On the holy mountain stands the city he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things of you are spoken, O city of God. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Cush. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in her. For the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord records as he registers the peoples, this one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. This is a curious and almost obscure little psalm, but it talks about the holy city, Jerusalem, uh, as being the place where God's pleasure is most seen. It is the seat of, of course, where the temple was. It is where the Jews believed that God had his residence on earth. Jerusalem has got such a rich history in the life of the people of God. It is the city of David. It is the city where Jesus worshiped. It is the city that is seen as the center of God's activity here on earth. And the reference in this Psalm, which is remarkable for the Old Testament, is that it makes reference to foreign nations, Philistia and Tyre and Cush, and speaking of people that the Lord knows in each of those foreign nations. In other words, this psalm is anticipating the spread of the gospel to the Gentile nations, which is really outstanding for an Old Testament passage. Yet, even in other places in the Old Testament, we can see where God had reached into foreign nations to find people who believed in him and who trusted in him. There was Rahab, the, the prostitute, who sheltered the spies that Joshua sent in to Jericho before they took the city. There was Ruth, who was the Moabite, who ended up in the genealogy of King David. There was the Syrian general, uh, Naaman, I think it's in 2 Kings, who was healed by the prophet Elisha. So all throughout the Old Testament, there have been clues that God was going to expand his reach just beyond the chosen people of the Jews. That was something that had been forgotten by the time of Jesus, and the Jews were offended by his outreach to Gentiles. But we know that after the resurrection, Jesus commanded his disciples to take the gospel to the whole world. And this is what's foreseen in this little psalm. People will claim they were born in Zion, even when they weren't, because it is their spiritual home. It represents the connection to God. It represents being a part of the family and the people of God. It's where their heavenly citizenship is now. And we see this all the way into the book of Revelation in the seventh chapter, where John says this, after this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. We should never forget that the gospel is for the whole world. And there is no one who is excluded from it on the basis of anything other than their relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the paradoxical things about Christianity. On the one hand, it is an extremely exclusive religion. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And many people stumble over that, and yet, God has revealed himself in Christ and he has made it plain to the world that Jesus is the only way 
And so it's exclusive, but it is also inclusive because the invitation to put your trust in Jesus is extended to every living human being on the planet, regardless of your background or your race or your nationality or anything else. It is not a geographically based religion. It is a spiritually based religion. And so in the same way that these uh, folks who are referenced in the book in, in Psalm 57 can say, this one was born there. I was born in the city of God. So all too belong to Jesus can say, I was born now in the city of God. My name is recorded in the book. Our citizenship is in heaven. This is great and glorious news, and we ought to have confidence as we live out our faith and seek opportunities to share the good news of Jesus with those who do not yet know him and hope and pray that those around us will see and want to enjoy the same thing so that they too may one day be able to say, I was born there. My name is recorded in the city of God. God's blessings be upon you this day.